Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Nandi. I'm back again to help you to achieve success in solving math problem. Please subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button in the right corner at the bottom. Please subscribe to my channel. This is the only way I get back every week and solve new problems for you so that you achieve success in statistics, okay? So please subscribe to my channel. So without further ado, I will uh, share my screen with you, okay? So. So this is a problem on confidence interval calculation for the mean using formula. The statement is the number of unhealthy days based on air quality index for a random sample of cities are shown. Determine the 98% confidence interval for the population mean air quality index. The 10 sample data points are given. So first we find the mean of the sample data points, X bar is to 33.5, sample size N is 10, and SX, the sample standard deviation is 27.678. Now I show you a diagram of the standard normal curve, a bell-shaped curve, symmetric, at the center, T is equal to zero. Why am I using a T curve? I'm using a T curve because the sample size is less than 30 and I do not know the population standard deviation. I only know the sample standard deviation. Therefore, I have to use the T-curve. Now the T-curve, if you remember, it's very similar to the Z-curve, only it has a wider tail and a little bit flatter than the Z-curve. That means the height of the T-curve is slightly less because it is wider at the tails. Now the confidence level is 0.98. That means the area in the center of the curve bounded by two vertical lines is 0.98, which is equal to C, the confidence level. Now the confidence level is equivalent to one minus alpha. What is alpha you ask? It is the level of significance. So alpha can be solved from C. Alpha equal to one minus C is one minus 0.98 is 0 0.02, okay? So that is the total area in the two tails is alpha, total alpha, alpha is 0 0.02. And area in each tail, because of symmetry of the T curve is alpha divided by two is 0 0.02 divided by two is 0 0.01. Now I need to find out the two critical values of minus T alpha by two and positive T alpha by two. Minus T alpha by two is on the left of T equal to zero on the horizontal axis and positive T alpha by two is on the right of T equal to zero in the center in the horizontal axis. These are also called critical values of T. Why are these called critical values of T? Because on the left of minus T alpha by two is the shaded area with area size equal to alpha by two. This is the area where most probably the population mean will not fall. Whereas the area on the right of minus T alpha by two under the curve is the area where most probably the population mean will fall, okay? So I've divided the curve into two parts by the minus T alpha by two, the vertical line drawn at minus T alpha by two. One on the left is where most probably the population mean will not fall and one on the right of minus T alpha by two under the T curve is where, which is not shaded, where the population mean will most probably fall. So therefore, because it divides the curve into the T curve into two parts, this minus T alpha by two is called a critical value of T. Similarly, on the right-hand side, we have the T alpha by two on the right of it, is the shaded area where most probably the population mean will not fall. And on the left of T alpha by two under the T curve, most probably the population mean will fall. Again, the T alpha by two separates the uh, sta standard normal curve, in this case, the T curve into two parts. 
a least probable region and the most probable region where the population mean will fall. That is why these are called critical values. So how to find this T alpha by two? You can go to the T tables. First, you have to know the degrees of freedom is 10 minus one is nine. Another way is to do using TI weight T4. Okay, we first press the second key, then the worst key, which is in the third row. And inside the worst key, we select number four, which is in T or inverse T function. When we select that in the calculator screen, we have an area, which is area in each tail, which in this case is 0 0.01. Degrees of freedom is sample size minus one, 10 minus one is nine. And we go down to paste, bring the cursor on paste and hit enter and enter. And we get minus T alpha by two is minus 2.821. As I told you, the T curve is symmetric. That is the left half is equal to the right half. So by symmetry, the T alpha by two value on the right of T equal to zero is 2.821. Now we will calculate the margin of error. Margin of error for the confidence interval is T alpha by two, the critical value of T multiplied by sigma X bar. What is sigma X bar? It is the standard error or sigma X bar is also called the same as standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X bar. Remember X bar is the sample mean. So sigma X bar is a standard deviation of the probability distribution of the sample means. And sigma x bar is given by sx divided by square root of n. Now we already know sx is 27.678 and square root of 10 because n is 10. So sigma x bar is 8.725. Now I calculate the margin of error, which is t alpha by two times margin of times standard error, which is 2.821 for t alpha by two multiplied by standard error, which is 8.725, it works out to 24.694. So the 98% confidence interval for the population mean is given by X bar minus me is minus E, the margin of error is the lower boundary, the upper boundary is X bar plus E, the margin of error. So like uh, substituting the values, I get the lower boundary as 33.5, minus 24.694 and the upper boundary as 33.5 plus 24.694. So when I work out the numbers, the lower boundary is given by 8.5 and the upper boundary is 58.2. What do these two numbers mean? We say, with 98% confidence, we can state that the actual population mean, in this case, air quality index will fall between 8.8 .8 and 58.2. The 98% confidence level means the effectiveness of the method that we use to determine the population, the confidence interval for the mean is effective 98% out of 100 times, okay? So it's a 98% effectiveness of the method I used to determine the confidence interval for the population mean. Okay, I will stop here today. If you have any question, you can always write a comment. Please like my video and please subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button at the bottom right corner, the red subscribe button. Please subscribe to my channel. This is the only way I come back each week to solve new problems for you. And I want you to be successful in math. So thanks for watching. Have a nice day, take care, and I'll see you next time, okay? Please subscribe to my channel.